Now that we're jamming lithium batteries in our sailboats, we've run into a problem with our alternators. The engine in the sailboat is almost always equipped with an automotive style alternator that, when introduced to a lithium battery bank, can fry the alternator. Or, as Victron demonstrated in their now famous video, cause a pretty catastrophic failure and maybe even a fire. But the folks over at Wakespeed say they've solved the problem. Let's find out what they're talking about. Here's the problem we're trying to solve. The automotive style alternator on the sailboat's inboard engine was designed for lead acid batteries. When the engine's running, the alternator creates electricity and then pushes it into the battery. As a lead acid battery approaches a full charge, its internal resistance increases, naturally limiting the rate at which it accepts current from that alternator. This inherent resistance helps protect the alternator and prevents it from being overwhelmed by a high current draw. But lithium batteries don't really push back like that. As Victron demonstrated, a lithium battery will take about as much power as your alternator can produce as fast as it can do it all the way to the top. The other problem with the lithium batteries is that they can shut off at a moment's notice. They have what's called a BMS, a little computer that watches the batteries like a hawk, and it'll shut them down at the first sign of trouble or if they're overcharged. Alternators are not designed for this. They expect that while they're pushing power, they'll meet that kind of resistance. So when it's removed suddenly, the diodes in the alternator often fry. So if we want to run our lithium batteries, how do we solve this problem? Well, on a small scale, let's say a weekend cruising sailboat, we simply run the alternator to a lead acid engine start battery and then use a DC to DC converter in between that lead acid battery and our lithium house bank. The DC to DC box will suck a little bit of power from the lead acid engine battery and give it to the lithium house bank safely, usually limited to about 20 or 30 amps. Problem solved, we can all go home. But what if we need more than 20 or 30 amps? We have a 600 amp hour house bank that's half empty. We'll have to run this engine for about 12 hours to recharge at that rate. For a lot of folks, that isn't good enough. This is where the folks at Wake Speed say they have a solution. They've created a little box for us that can turn your old fashioned automotive alternator into a lithium battery charger. It's got all kinds of extremely complicated things going on inside, but in the simplest terms, it connects to your alternator and then to your lithium bank and regulates the alternator's workload so that it can safely push as much power as it wants to into those lithium batteries without turning into a smoke machine it'll avoid the lithium suddenly shutting off and frying the diodes in the alternator. The wake speed device is watching all kinds of variables from the battery and from the alternator. It acts sort of as a go-between. It's not just voltage either, it's watching temperature. If that 600 amp hour battery bank is near empty and the alternator is a massive 250 amp Balmar, it will let the alternator jam as much as 250 amps into the battery, but it watches the heat in the diode pack on the alternator and will actually tell the alternator to calm down if it's getting too hot. It plays with the alternator in the way the alternator expects to be played with because remember it's designed and expecting a lead acid battery. And you can program the wake speed device with the onboard dip switches if you have the white one or with your laptop. Let's say you have an alternator where the manufacturer says the safe operating temperature of the diode packs is 110 degrees Celsius. You can program the wake speed to not allow that alternator to go over, say, 90 degrees. That'll keep it safe. As the alternator is cramming power into lithium batteries at 225 amps or something, as it reaches 90 degrees, the wake speed device will ramp the alternator speed down to stay below 90. It's very clever. It'll make your alternator last a long time. You can then take that old DC to DC box that you were using and run it backwards between the house bank and the engine battery. So it'll feed a little bit of energy from the house bank back to your lead acid side that you used while you were starting the engine. Wake Speed outlines some of the most common setups. The first and most common would be a stock alternator feeding a lead acid battery with the DC to DC box charging the house bank. To step it up a notch, you add a wake speed box and you feed that alternator's power directly to the house bank and use the DC to DC to recharge the engine battery. 
To go beyond that, you might add a second alternator entirely. This can sound very enticing, but it's going to get expensive and hear me out. The factory alternator stays connected to the engine battery and stays isolated, charging that lead acid. The second alternator, let's say we get a big Balmar 250, it feeds the wake speed box, which feeds the big lithium house bank. This will charge that half depleted 600 amp hour house bank in just over an hour instead of 12, and it'll do it safely. But expensive is the key word there. That wake speed box is about $1,000 all in, but you also need that second alternator, the Balmar 250, 1200 bucks, and you need a mount to get it on the engine. So you'll need a bracket and another belt. If you have a Yanmar 4J, for example, I found this bracket on Marine Smart Energy for 1500 bucks. That's a lot of money for a metal bracket and a belt. Something else to consider is heat. An alternator's rating, let's say the Balmar 250, we've been talking about that one a lot. It's rated for 250 amps, but at a given temperature. They'll all produce what they're rated for at the temperature that they were tested at, but as an alternator heats up, it drastically decreases its efficiency. And we know our sailboat engine rooms are notoriously underventilated. So a 250 in your tight little poorly ventilated engine room might only perform at 100 amps or even less. As the alternator dramatically loses efficiency all on its own, the wake speed device is also watching its temperature and throttling it back further based on that temperature. This presents a very good case for us to get some cold air into the engine room with active fans and things like that. Maybe that's a whole different video. Some other things that wake speed touts here, they say they've got true battery management. Unlike old school regulators that just follow fixed voltage set points, the wake speed regulator can actually manage your batteries based on their chemistry. Whether you've got AGMs, gel, or lithium, it's all programmable. So you can dial in precise charging profiles that match your specific battery manufacturer's recommendations. They also have CAN bus communication, which they say is a huge leap forward. Basically, wake speed regulators can integrate directly with your batteries, your lithium batteries, BMS, over CAN bus. This means the regulator isn't guessing at what your batteries want, it's actually talking directly to the batteries. The BMS can tell the alternator exactly how much current to deliver and when to back off. For lithium setups, that's kind of a game changer in both safety and efficiency. But it's important to note here, there are six or seven highly used BMS languages. And while wake speed will talk to a lot of battery BMSs, it won't work with all of them. The growing assortment of batteries on Amazon, like Litime, for example, use an in-house designed BMS that, while it's very good at being a BMS for that battery itself, will not talk to outside devices. If you want to use that feature on the wake speed, you got to buy a battery set that the wake speed can actually communicate with. Field current control. Instead of just pushing the alternator as hard as it can go, the wake speed regulator uses field current limiting. It can precisely control how hard the alternator works, preventing overheating and extending the alternator's life. You're no longer cooking your alternator at anchor just to keep up with a hungry lithium bank. They've got smart dual alternator support. If you're running twin alternators, the wake speed regular can actually balance output between the two of them. This means smoother load sharing, less stress, and more efficient charging without overloading any one alternator. They've got advanced sensing. The regulator monitors both battery voltage at the terminals and the alternator temperature. If things start to get too hot, it automatically turns the volume down. That's the kind of protection that can save you from a very expensive failure or a catastrophic failure at sea. Now, I actually know a few people that are using this wake speed device behind a Balmar 250, and they love it. They can cram energy into their lithium bank so fast that running the AC and the induction cooktop are actually pretty easy. This actually works in the real world. Do you have any experience with this or other devices like it? Share in the comments to let fellow sailors know what works, what doesn't, and what other advice you have to share. And while we're talking about voltage and big amperage, you want to protect all this fancy equipment as best you can, and lightning strikes are something that you should definitely consider. Fortunately, we have a great article called Lightning Protection 101 that dives down the rabbit hole on just how to do that. I'll leave a link in the description if you're up for some learning today. If you like sailboat videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And hit subscribe so that I can see you again next time.